Hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for joining us here in this video. This is um, another video, and I believe uh, in my heart and in my spirit that it was a prophetic dream. And so I this time was not the one having the dream. It was um, our guest here, uh, Lucas, and uh, he will nice. introduce himself and uh, he will tell us a little bit about this dream. And then after he is done telling the dream, I will uh, say what I believe the, the meaning of the dream is. OK, and uh, and again, and I'll leave it open for every one of you guys to also you know, jump in there in the comment section and uh, let us know what you believe uh, this uh, dream uh, is about. OK, so without further ado, I'm going to uh, let uh, Lucas here, our guest, uh, Pastor Lucas, actually, and uh, I'm going to let him actually introduce himself. OK, go ahead. OK, so guys, uh, God bless you all. Uh, I'm going to give you grace. So as uh, Phil Beck already said, I'm Pastor Lucas. I'm talking here from Brazil. Um, I'm a pastor on the Salvation Army, and I uh, have this uh, dream. Uh, not, a, I don't believe it's a fancy one, but in some some way, uh, a kind of perfect dream. And I really believe that it's good to share this kind of um, experience because it can uh, give us a more rich um, uh, and more profound uh, relationship with God and with the God's plan. So let's do it. <laughs> Amen. Yes, no, I definitely uh, agree with that. And uh, I believe that these dreams um, serve, that God gives us these dreams so that we may understand the things that are to come and you know get closer to god uh, strengthen ourselves spiritually in him mm -hmm. and in fact in um the the, the in the bible uh, acts chapter 2 verse 17 actually says this all right and i'm going to read here and in the last days it shall be god declares that i will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and daughters um, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And that uh, is what I believe is happening, uh, you know, across the world. I, I really see a, a lot of uh, people, you, you know, saints of the church, right, uh, having dreams, right, and God giving visions. I've been seeing this a lot. So, and this is uh, God's mercy and love towards his church, right, because he uh, reveals it. See this, God giving us uh, uh, these uh, information. And um, yeah, and without further ado, let's jump in, please. Lucas, let's, uh, Pastor Lucas, <laughs> let's hear uh, the dream, please. Yeah, so guys, um, it was a dream I have a few days ago. Um, and uh, to say the truth, it, um, it was not a dream. Uh, uh, how can I say it? it was a very vivid dream? Uh, like uh, I really feel when I was dreaming, I really feel that I was in that place and uh, passing through that experience. So it was something that really touched uh, and really um, affected not uh, only uh, inside of the dream, but outside too. So the, the dream started with me um, inside some kind of jail and inside some kind of uh, cell. Uh, not a clean place, not uh, a beautiful place, but uh, a place with a sad uh, feeling, uh, a very uh, oppressive feeling. Um, and the place was not too large. I really remember that in the dream uh i it was not too much uh larger than my two arms i open it and backside uh of me i remember the metal bars of the jail and in front of me 
uh, I remember to look to uh, some kind of window. And in that window, uh, there was some metal bars too. So uh, I believe it's uh, that uh, imaginary uh, pop future uh, cell of jail with bars mm. and, you know, um, yeah. it was a very, uh, very oppressive and very bad um, place to be at. Uh, so this, the dream started in a bad way, in some kind uh, of way. Uh, then I look at the, the window and the, this part of the dream was the most interesting part because when I look at to the window uh, in the horizon I, s I saw some kind of storm and that storm was not a natural one because you know when we look to the uh, sky and see a storm forming you see that dark clouds uh, probably probably some kind of uh, lightning uh, not more than that but uh, in that and storm, rains too, right? Rains, rains are yeah, very common. Rains. You see in thick, dark clouds. Yeah, but that 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 storm was not like this, because it had clouds. Uh, it had clouds, but to say the truth, uh, the clouds are uh, showed uh, with lots of flashes of heat colors, like red, yellow, orange, even gold color and silver wow. color, but not like lightnings. More Got it. Like, so it's just warm col colors inside of this yeah. cloud. Okay. And how of them, um, how can I say, move it through each other and uh, pass by one each other. So it was a not normal uh, storm was approaching. And in the second uh, part that I focused my uh, my eyes on the storm, I saw that the storm are, was getting close of the jail and the cell that I was in. And as much as that storm get closed, I uh, could see that the storm was not raining. And this is very interesting in this dream because yeah. it's like the opposite because you know rain falls from the sky to the ground right. but in that storm things uh, are getting up from the ground to the storm to the sky mm. and it was not uh, water or rain or some kind of dust but uh, it was crosses like uh christian crosses you know yeah. uh cru Amen. crucifix uh, yeah, yeah, they are yeah. uh, going up from the ground to the sky in direction of that storm, and that storm was like approaching, uh, not so slowly, not so slowly, but not so fast, uh, mm -hmm. like a normal storm you know, when you see that the the rain is approaching like this. Sure. Um, and I, in in that moment when I saw the crosses going from the ground to the, the the storm the only the only thing i could do on the dream was go on my knees and confess jesus uh, yeah. you know i'm a pastor i'm a christian so i already yeah. confess jesus as my lord and savior i know yeah. that jesus <laughs> is uh the son of god who comes uh, to the earth to save us and I already confess it on my life. I already have Jesus as my savior. But on this moment, I don't know it was because of the powerful sensation from that storm. Uh, because the, the, the cell was an oppressive, oppressive uh, mm. place to be at. Yeah, yeah. But the storm surpassed the feeling of the, the cell. The oppressive with, uh, uh, feeling, right? It, it, yeah. was, it, it, it was more devastating that the storm was coming than the cell itself. Totally. It was very, a very <laughs> powerful storm. Like, and one thing, to, and you were, you were by yourself in this cell. Yeah, in the, in this only cell. by myself. By, only by, by myself. Yourself. 
but in the same time I was alone on the cell. I really felt like uh, if someone was every time looking to me in an oppressive way. Mm. Uh, I I really don't know how can I de describe because it was not a physical sensation. It was more a uh, feeling uh, like an emotional, psychological or even a spiritual sensation. But the storm, the storm really surpassed everything of this because it was so powerful that I really forgot the, the cell by itself, the jail by itself. And I really go to my kidneys and I say, God, you know that I I uh, I confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I know that uh, Jesus is the only Lord uh, of all the world, and I really need to say it to you. And in that time, when I finished to say that uh, simple simple words, like re saying that to God, I wake up. Yeah. And when I wake up, the sensation of the dream was so uh, brutal. In a good way, <laughs> but so uh, so strong on my body that I even felt my legs were shaking. And this and is after you you had the dream. After you woke up, yeah, that's the feeling you had. Aftermath. Yeah, like yeah. you. Do you remember inside of the dream? I really lose all my strength on my legs and I fall on my knees, like proclaiming Jesus. Yes. And when I wake up, my, my legs was so weak that I felt that I really fall in some way, physical yeah. way. Yeah. Um, but uh, so the, the dream surpassed through the, the, the dream state to the wake up state. Yeah. And it was a very, uh, very personal, also a very, very different kind of sensation. Uh, inside of the dream and outside of the dream and think yeah. about the dream after that. So I shared yeah. the dream with uh, Phil Beck and now yeah. we can discuss yeah. about that. Yes, yes, definitely. And um, as soon as I heard that dream, I said, you know what? <clears throat> this dream needs to be shared. We need to put it out. Um, the church, right, needs to hear this dream. And um, in fact, I'm going to take a, a, a just a few seconds here to ask you guys that are watching here live that you watched up until this point thank you once again please go ahead and hit the like button because as soon as you hit that like button you are co-laboring with christ all right because what happens is that the algorithm understands that this um video right this this topic is um indeed you know uh engageable and it'll start sending it to more people and more people will see and uh, we'll need to uh, hear this um, dream, okay? So please, please, the other thing I'll ask you um, is to go ahead and hit that also subscribe uh, button here, and which I often come and put prophetic dreams that I have or my wife or somebody that shares them with me. I have a few dreams that my wife uh, had and, and that I had that I haven't yet put up, but I will, and if you hit that, bell button as soon as they're up you won't miss you won't miss it you'll be able to go ahead and, and, and watch it as well okay so please go ahead and do so thank you very much uh for doing that uh now i there's a lot that happened in this dream although it seemed like it could have been like a quick dream there was so much to happen in this dream so um i i'm gonna tell you what i believe uh, the revelation is okay so first off, you're in a jail cell, right? And the other thing is that you were by yourself, okay? So I believe that what that meant is that salvation is individual, right? You weren't collective, you were by yourself. Although, you know, at the end times, yes, they might have a whole bunch of people in one cell, but that symbolically, what I believe again is that, um, it's between you and Christ. And you said it yourself. The only thing you were able to do is to get on your knees and to confess Jesus Christ, right? Mm -hmm. Which is the only, uh, you know, Lord and save, Savior of our souls, right? So that's what I believe uh, that 
part right there. And then you saw a storm coming, but no uh, rain. So I believe it's something supernatural. Right? It's not something common that we see in this world, something that may happen, you know, in our daily lives. Or, and it's something uh, divine, right? And you had colors in there, right? And warm colors and even golden colors, you know. Uh, and a lot of times when we see crowns, we, we, uh, they are crowns made out of gold, right? And so I, I believe that there is, uh, that this supernatural power is happening by the force of, uh, you know, God himself. Then, um, it's very, I would say very, um, eschatological, right? It's an eschatology mm -hmm. dream, I would say, an end times dream, because it lines up um, with what uh, Apostle Paul said, and uh, and he he says he he mentions uh, the rapture in two different places, right? And uh, one is in First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse fifty and on, and then um, he also mentions it in First uh, Thessalonians chapter 4. Now, I don't remember exactly the verse on the Thessalonians. I'd have to go back and look. But um, he mentions it a couple of times. And I think it does a wonderful job explaining why the rapture. Why? Because he says that the ones who are asleep, right, who are dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up in the clouds to be with the Lord. So <clears throat> Amen. when we... So when we see that, I believe the, the crosses that were going from the ground up into, you know, this cloud, because, again, the cloud is, remember, he also mentions it, and Jesus, Jesus mentions this as well in uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 30 and 31, that, you know, he will come with power and great glory in the, in the, sky, in the sky, in the cloud, right? Mm -hmm. And with the sound of the um, uh, trumpet, right? of the uh, angel and actually uh, paul even describes the type of angel he, he uh, says the archangel right in first thessalonians chapter four so and so what i believe here is uh that this cloud you know represents uh god coming with power and great glory as you saw you know with colors and, and coming on the cloud and gathering the ones who were asleep first, the crosses. Remember, cross represents, uh, it's a symbol for uh, Christianity, right? And that's who, who we are, Christians. And also, uh, God, see, Jesus' uh, death on the cross provided us that, um, gave us uh, uh, the ability, as soon as we accept and become a child of God, to, go, to be a part of God's kingdom. And so one, one, once we die and once we are uh, resurrected, right, which is the uh, uh, resurrected resurrection of the church, which is the rapture, then we are caught up. As Paul says it, we who are asleep, asleep first, they, they will go up to heaven. And then who, who, we who remain will be caught up after. So I believe, and, and remember, you said that the cloud was approaching you. Mm -hmm. So I believe <clears throat> that this... Uh, then what you saw was the dead who were, uh, died in Christ first, and then also cross represents, you know, because it does represent death, but it also represents life mm -hmm. uh, through Jesus Christ. So those ones who, who the crosses that you saw up were the ones who uh, were uh, dead in Christ, who was rising first, and it was coming towards you. Why? Because we who are alive and remain will be caught up, as Paul says, in the cloud together to be with the Lord forever, right? And I think that's what it is. And it's important to say that you are in a cell. And, and I know that a lot of people, and because we grew up in church and I grew up also uh, uh, being taught the pre-tribulation pre um, rapture theology, which if you are not familiar with it, it just means that you're going to go to heaven before you ever see any of the tribulation, all right? Mm -hmm. But more and more, I've been seeing people having dreams and visions and also, uh, according with the word of God, that uh, we will be going through this. And your dream was very uh, strong and vivid. And you, you also grew up, uh, if I'm, yeah. because as, as the previous conversations that we had, Richard Bill, do you want to just quickly share that real quick? 
Yeah, the, uh, you you see here in Brazil this um, this position about the rapture being um, before um, the tribulation. It's the most common one. So if you ask for I don't know eighty five percent of the Christians on Brazil, uh, may, maybe more, <laughs> yeah. they will say that oh no the, the the church will not pass through the tribulation because we will be raptured before this so we don't need to uh, to to care about worry. it because yeah, yeah worry don't, about don't it. worry forget it. forget it we will not we won't pass be here through that yeah <laughs> we will not be here so don't worry about that yeah we'll so, be raptured before. <laughs> Yeah, and this is very common here on Brazil. Uh, I really yeah. believe that in lots of countries, and because you know Brazil, it's uh, have a lot of um, Catholic uh, mm. Roman Catholic influence. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, a lot of Catholics. The, yeah, yeah, and this this is in some way also uh, in some way it's the the Catholic influence on our theology too. So. Mm -hmm uh it is what it is <laughs> yeah yeah no definitely yeah no thanks for 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 sharing all of that and your your dream and um but i've seen um in the united states uh at least uh i see more and more people changing this position of the pre-tribulation uh rapture theology to the post-tribulation rapture theology because of everything that's happening around the world and because um you know the more People really read the Bible and have start having these uh, dreams and vision. Uh, I feel that that the Lord is is in some way uh, revealing, you know, preparing uh, the church. Okay, and um, we uh, we are all saints, as um, Paul says it, right? And we and when we come together, we individually are saints. When we come together, we form the body, which is called the church. Right, each. Um, member of the church uh, with its, uh, you know, own function, right? Like arms, heads, eyes, legs, right? So when we all come together, because we all have a specific calling, then we form the body, which is the church. Thank you once again for uh, no, you're sharing welcome. this. this it was my, my pleasure to share. Yeah, and my prayer and hope uh, for you and everybody watching here is that no matter what happens it doesn't matter what you believe it's if it's pre uh, mid or post um just you know hold strong uh with the lord and do never ever compromise your faith your belief in christ and i ask uh, god to give me and everybody the strength that whatever it is um that we may face that we will and i uh you know choose christ Mm -hmm. under any circumstances whatever that Amen. may be Amen. right just as shadrach meshach and abednego did not bow down to king nebuchadnezzar right right they didn't know they didn't know that that they were they would be delivered from the fire they didn't know that they actually said that god is will is able to deliver us but if he doesn't deliver us we'll still won't bow down so they were mm -hmm. that's how strong and, and um in their faith that they were Right. And that's that's what we need to uh, be as well. All right. Amen. And um, yeah, and that's what I want to leave everybody here. Did you want to say any uh, last words? Yeah, so, uh, guys, uh, if you are watching this video, uh, click and subscribe, clicking the like button uh, mm -hmm. and I active the, the, the little bell to receive a new new message. notifications. Yeah, yeah, yeah. New, new notifications. And uh, remember, every time, remember that you uh, have nothing here that uh, means more to you than your relationship with the Lord. Amen. Uh, because your relationship with the Lord is eternal. Okay? Yes. So don't sell your relationship with Jesus Christ uh, by a cheap price. I really see lots of Christians yes. selling their uh faith on jesus christ jesus christ for a ship price and mm. please don't do that please if mm. you need to choose to go to jail and i don't know if in some way god was preparing me for that can be you know can the be. world we are living in uh, it's very mm. uh a very terrible world <laughs> every day the the persecution uh, against the church is getting growing more yeah, yeah. 
and, and, totally. and it used to be it used to be more regional, but it's um it's spreading. It's yeah, spreading. Totally. And even here in it's America, spreading. we're seeing more as well. So, totally. you know, it, it's just like Jesus said, it's like birth pains. It'll just get more intense and intensified. Mm -hmm. More intensified. Perfect. Yeah. So don't sell your faith. Please don't do that. Uh, still in your faith in Jesus Christ. And if you need to go to jail, go to jail. And if you need to die, die for Jesus. Because yeah. the, the life we live here. It's just the material one. You can live, yeah. I don't know, 70 years, 80 years, 90 years yeah. if you uh, are lucky. And yeah, you have a lot lucky. of health. And God, and yeah. God said, Here, here's 90 years for you. Yeah, <laughs> we're not perfect. guaranteed, but we're not guaranteed tomorrow, right? So yeah. it can be even, even shorter than that. Yeah, but think about that. Uh, you really want to change your eternity with the Lord for i don't know 90 years here in yeah. this place yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't sell your faith, not worth please. it no no yeah it's eternity is, yeah our our um our life here is just uh, a vapor in the wind you know you're Perfect. here gone and then eternity it's it's just forever right it, yeah it's uh it's you know there's no time so and I wanted to say that uh, Pastor Lucas also has a channel on YouTube and it is in Portuguese for those of you that uh, like Portuguese or want to practice Portuguese or speak Portuguese and are here uh, watching. Go ahead and, and also uh, follow them because they have a lot of great content and their uh, YouTube uh, page is Juventude Salvacionista do Brasil and um, I'll I'll have it here written for you guys as well. And I just want to say that I have also uh, a eschatology book, an end times book. All right. And I'll leave it here on the, uh, the description section below the, the video. And I'm and a little spoiler here. I am working on a eschatology course that I'm creating and soon I'll be launching. So you have that Amen. as well. All right. And yeah, and I'll, um, you know, I, I don't have it ready yet, so I don't have it in the description the uh, course but you know once i do uh, i'll put it in here so you can go but if you don't see it now you can go go ahead and click and eventually it will be here as well all right again thank you pastor lucas so much for sharing and may god bless you your family and everybody watching here and may god gives uh, give us the strength and the power that even if we don't have it yet that we will ask shadrach meshach and abednego had amen all right. God bless so it you. It was my pleas pleasure. God bless you. Feel back. And God bless everyone who is watching. So bye-bye. God bless you all. Bye-bye. Thank you. Take care.